Some games are meant to be very unrealistic. Fantasy, magic, etc. And some games, well, I mean, not everything is realistic about them. Otherwise, like, why not just go to the grocery store? But something about them just feels real. Hi, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games that behave like real life. Starting off with number 10, out of all the survival sims out there, Green Hell is probably the one that finds the best balance between fun game mechanics and hardcore survival. Compared to other popular crafting and survival sims, certain elements of Green Hell are much more realistic. Like, for example, the simple act of eating. In most survival games, you have a hunger meter, a thirst meter, and an energy meter. But in Green Hell, you actually need to think about nutrition. Any old food isn't going to cut it to keep your guy healthy because the standard hunger meter is split into three in this game, and you got to worry about your carbs, fats, and proteins if you want to stay alive. Mm -mm. <coughs> Another major concern that makes this game stand out is the danger of getting infectious diseases. Getting hurt isn't just about healing the wound, you also have to worry about disinfectants. There are a lot of precautions that have to be made in order to avoid getting diseased. Um, you can also catch parasites and you just lose your sanity. Crafting in general also has a certain amount of realism to it. You can only build things that make sense using the tools that you have, and even then there's dangers like sleeping on the ground, it can get you worms, or resting without some kind of canopy, you're gonna get sick because you're not protected from rain. There's just a lot more to the survival part of the simulation here than other games. Of course, for every realistic thing, there's something else that's obviously unrealistic, but that's video games in general. For a game that looks as good as this one, it's impressive how realistic it manages to be. At number 9 is Hunter Call of the Wild. This isn't just a list about survival simulators, there's plenty of other games out there. And when it comes to simulating the act of hunting, few games are as immersive as Hunter Call of the Wild. In most games, hunting's pretty basic. You just wander around the woods and then shoot whatever's standing around. But ask any hunter and they'll tell you there's a lot more than that to hunting. A lot more walking around, at least. This game accurately tries to simulate the hunting experience, which means you're going to be spending a lot of the time in your game wandering around, blowing a lure, and looking through binoculars to find something, just anything, to hunt. There's multiple tools for tracking, and the process is much more involved than any other game out there. When you actually get the rare chance to shoot at something, the ballistics are pretty realistic as well. It's not the most elaborate simulation ever, but it works really well. Animals react to your presence, you can't just sneak up on them and fire. You have to be aware of wind direction and scent can make them less likely to see you, etc. It's pretty involved. Now, it's not an in-depth survival simulator, but it really does a good job of replicating the experience of hunting, and it does it pretty much better than anything else out there. At number 8 is Kingdom Come Deliverance. This is a game that's really trying to accurately simulate a very specific moment in time, 15th century Bohemia. What makes this game unique is how it attempts to not just be realistic from a historical perspective, but also in its gameplay. You start off as the untrained son of a blacksmith. You're not even capable of reading, so you're like way weaker than at the start of even your average RPG. So fighting something that is normally weak in a game, like a bandit, with a billy club, it's actually pretty dangerous. Eating and sleeping are necessary, otherwise you get weaker. Uh, you have to bathe every once in a while or you start to stink. And you can actually wear multiple layers of clothing, all of which provide different levels of protection, as well as change how people see you. Like if you're lumbering around in a big suit of armor, people are going to assume you're looking for a fight, or if you've got blood on your clothes, they think that you stole them. Uh, of course, not everything's perfectly realistic. People who are more knowledgeable than I am about this period have spoken extensively about things that the game gets wrong, but it does get a lot right, and it's trying a hell of a lot more than any Assassin's Creed game. Uh, it's also still pretty buggy, even now, but in the genre of hardcore realistic open world RPGs, this one pretty much stands alone. And number seven is Beam NG Drive, a strangely named sandbox driving game that is known for having one of, if not the most realistic car physics ever created, especially when you're talking about the soft body physics.
in terms of realism, people give credit for the Assetto Corsa games as being one of the most realistic in its driving simulation, but this, uh, it's, it's more. I think what makes this game really stand out is how it simulates a car not as a single solid object, like in pretty much every other, even simulation racing game, but as a collection of parts. Because of that, the game actually simulates how a car slightly flexes and bends with every turn and how the tires interact with the road. It's a slight but very important distinction. And while the game doesn't have the most accurate car physics, you know, ever, and graphically, it's not particularly impressive, but the simulation is second to none. It's most obvious in the spectacular crashes, which never look the same, but just driving around, you can tell how systematic the game is. There's a level of realism here that's closer to real life than almost any other racing game. It doesn't look as realistic as the best racers, but in this case, it's what's under the hood that matters the most. And number six is The Long Dark, a game where at first it seems like everything's trying to kill you. In some ways, its survival mechanics are simpler. You just have a standard hunger meter. But what makes this game unique is the omnipresent threat of the cold. To survive, you have to wear layers, repair your clothes, and constantly be on the lookout for new sources of heat. I don't feel so good. I need to rest up. Carrying too much stuff slows you down a lot. Fires can get put out by high winds. You can get cabin fever if you stay inside too long. There's a lot to keep track of and a lot of mistakes to make, but that's what makes it such an engaging survival experience. Like Green Hell, you can suffer from various afflictions like parasites if you eat raw meat, dysentery if you drink unsafe water, sprains from falling, burns from fires, lacerations, and of course, frostbite. My energy is just disappearing. <sighs> And healing this stuff isn't some simple one-time fix. It can take hours or even the rest of the game to shake some of these negative effects off. Visually, it's a lot simpler and less immersive than something like Green Hell, but the survival elements are some of the best out there. Like they're simple enough to understand while still being extremely in depth. <laughs> And number five is Eleven Table Tennis, which is a VR table tennis game. And it is so accurate to real life. You can find videos of people who have learned how to play table tennis using this game. And all of those skills translate to playing table tennis in real life. There's a pretty impressive video that was posted on the Table Tennis Daily YouTube channel in which, in which a tennis instructor coached somebody using VR for 30 days and then they played table tennis and she was able to play it like well, actually quite well. And when you look at the table tennis game in VR, uh, firstly, in VR, it obviously looks better than it does in some footage. It has an element of 3D that makes it more lifelike and your actions more analogous. But it's pretty plain and it's pretty nondescript. I mean, that's something that you could, in theory, play on a phone in terms of what kind of power it needs, I think. But it is so accurate that it actually creates muscle memory that people can utilize playing table tennis. Like, if that's not perfect for this list, where we're talking about games that behave like real life, I don't know what is. At number four is Project Zomboid, ignoring the whole zombies aspect of it. In a lot of ways, Project Zomboid takes the realism present in other survival games on this list and ratchets it up even further. Depending on the level of realism you set the game to, you'll have to worry about not just getting bit by flesh-eating monsters, not realistic per se, uh, but every little mundane thing that you'd have to worry about outside of getting bit by the undead. You break through a window, but you forgot to clear off the glass, you're probably gonna cut your hands. Those bandages aren't an instant fix. You gotta keep them on for days and possibly swap them out because that could get nasty. And before you bandage up, you gotta take some tweezers and dig out the glass shards. You wouldn't want to heal around the glass shards, would you? You probably wouldn't anyways. Hurt your leg? Uh, you'll have to make a splint, which again, has to be on your guy for several weeks. So that's weeks inside the game where your dude just has reduced mobility. Guns can be super complex too. You don't just have to worry about each individual bullet. You have to rack the chamber to keep your weapon from jamming. This whole game has this level of detail uh, where even something as minor as going to bed with a full stomach can cause problems depending on your character.
What makes this game unusual is it's almost Sims-like version of survival, where everything you do can give your character different moodles, either good or bad, and that can have positive or negative effects on your chances of survival. It's all around a, a pretty complex survival simulation. Sure, some things are sped up, like planting crops to make them more useful, uh, but otherwise this is probably one of the most realistic simulations of a zombie apocalypse ever created. 99% of the time, you end up dead too, and that's probably the most realistic thing about it. And number three, Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Yeah, you read that right. This is not a survival game. It's actually a SimCity-like city builder. But where those games try to abstract the complex workings of city planning, this game throws all that stuff at you and says, ha <laughs> good luck. In comparison to pretty much every other city builder, the economic simulation in this game is extremely realistic, bordering on overwhelming. Uh, think about building a road in SimCity. What do you do? You just draw out a road and there it is. In this game, to build a road, your workers have to come in, lay gravel, cover it with asphalt, and flatten it. Uh, and these are all separate steps that require their own resources. So uh, it's a lot more realistic than SimCity, to say the very, very least. It's a really uh, complicated game with a whole lot going on that I don't completely understand. But from everything I've heard, it's one of the most complicated, realistic, and unforgiving simulations of building I've ever seen. It's also, from all accounts, still pretty buggy, but that just comes with the territory when you're talking about games like this. At number two is Flight Simulator. You know a game is realistic when people tell you that playing it is considered legitimate training. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a game that's both very forgiving, but it can also be insanely in-depth. Just the level of detail planet Earth has itself is amazing. Uh, using geomapping technology, they've managed to approximate pretty much the entire planet, and certain areas look absolutely stunning. So do the planes. Very impressive. The cockpits are not just for show. In certain planes, every button and computer works exactly how it's supposed to. On something like a jumbo jet, that's, that's a hell of a lot of buttons. And it basically takes a trained pilot to understand what everything does. Now, the game doesn't force you to play that way, though. Plenty of people play this game uh, just to do some virtual sightseeing and turn off all of the simulation elements. But with everything turned to max, you're essentially playing an entirely different game. Other than the visceral sensation of actually cruising around 30,000 feet, everything else about this game can be considered accurate to the flying experience. And while it's not going to earn you actual flight hours, it's still considered a pretty solid starting place for prospective pilots, which really does speak to the level of realism this game is working with. And finally, at number one, PC Building Simulator. Um, it's one of those games that sounds like it's a joke, uh, but it's not. It's a legitimate educational tool for learning how to build a PC. It's not a bunch of abstract crap either. Actual PC part manufacturers appear in the game, so the parts you're buying for your fictional PC are actually real parts. So you could conceivably plan to build a machine using this game and then go out and buy the parts and do it. By that point, you would have the process honed to a finely tuned speed run of assembling the computer, right? Uh, also for compulsive PC building, it's a fun way to screw around with setups and challenge yourself with ridiculous builds while also not spending, you know, any money outside of what the game costs. Like, it's $19.99. Uh, compare that to buying PC components and oof, big difference. But it's a pretty good introduction to understanding how the whole process of building a PC actually works. Uh, we're all dorks here. Sitting in a room working on a PC is a good chunk of our lives. So in a way, there's few games as realistic to the experiences of a gamer especially a PC gamer, as this one.
And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.